Happy Friday to you all. Um, I was going through some of my stuff that I've got here since I moved in, and um, I think it was last summer uh, I did. I had this great idea to make a bunch of um, little coat hook racks that you know kind of rustic that you put next to your door and um, you know hang your coats on and stuff and I made probably four or five of them and I kept the the one I liked the best for myself um, but the coloring on the board is off it's it's kind of like this really pale yellow and I live in a house now that's the walls are all white everything's kind of white gray black um, so it doesn't go with my place and I, I do want to hang it up somewhere and and make this useful and more attractive and yeah, so it blends in so i'm going to show you really quick what i'm working on and i'm going to pause this video and then turn you around so this is what i've got um, i took these just old pieces of pallet wood and i i just gave them kind of a, a faux painted look and this is what they looked like before um, this is the only one i have with me right now i've got the other ones in a storage bin somewhere but uh, this one's kind of cool. It's got, got old um, hooks from a coat rack that is vintage, probably like 40s, 50s, 60s, something like that. And so it, it, they look old. And then I've got this, this bin right here, which is from like an old grain uh, for like when they put um, grain in silos or taking it out of silos. I'm not sure exactly how the, the use of it. And maybe if you know, you can put it in the comment. But it's a cool old bin. And I clear coated it. Kind of, it's got that rusty look to it, but I need to change this color because it's not white. So if I put it up against something white, you can kind of see uh, that it's more yellow. And I'm going to actually change it so that it's more white. Uh, so what I need to do is take all these these um, hooks off, and then um, paint it, and then put it back together, and then I can hang it up in my place. So um, that's kind of what I'm going to do, and I will walk you through the process as I go. So the first thing I need to do is take off the hardware. So I've just got, uh, these are actually old vintage screws, which are flatheads, which are not my favorite to deal with, but um, but they're older. Adds to the vintage vibe. This one I already took out. So that's that. These. Okay, got a different screwdriver that works. And this little this little thing I found it on a um, I don't know it was on some some little file wooden file cabinet or something like that. And I just thought it'd be cool. You could put a little tag in there that said keys or you know maybe in an old time font or something like that. Anyway, one of my harebrained ideas. Okay, so now we've got the piece of wood here. Um, what I want to do first, because um, what you do is you, you paint it a color and then you go back with sandpaper and you kind of scrape off some of it so you get that rustic look. But I don't, I, the color that I want coming through is, I would rather have like slight black lines in there rather than yellow or just the natural wood. So what I'm going to do first is paint this board black and then once it's dry, I'll come back to it and um, paint it white and then go over it with the sandpaper once that's dry. So um, I'm just going to use some craft paint. It's just um, apple barrel acrylic paint. Inexpensive, works fine for this kind of thing. And I don't need any fancy brushes or anything. I'm just going mean, to... This, this wood is fairly clean. It's been in a box somewhere and dusted off. So all I'm going to do is just kind of Put some paint on here, that way I don't have to dirty up a paint tray. And I'm going to grab myself a little, just a cheap brush, and I'm just going to paint that.
do the next step. Thanks for uh, your patience. Um, all right, so this is nice and dry. This has been sitting for hours today since I've been gone. Um, what I've got here is I've got some primer, some white primer. Now, you can do this a couple different ways. You can use another, like you can use the, the white craft paint, um, same stuff, uh, and that would work. Or you can use a, um, a primer, which is what I'm going to use, primer stain blocker. This is a Zinzer, and it's just a uh, just a white primer. Get this thing open. There we go. Ooh, got some chunks going on in there. Okay, so all I'm going to do now. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Uh, if you're just doing a, a simple faux finish um, or like a kind of a weathered look, one way you can do it is this. I'll show you this way and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it this way and I'll just kind of see how it looks but you just you put just a little bit of paint on there you don't need a lot and you just very lightly brush it on you know just kind of do some some light strokes there you're not pushing really hard because you don't really want it to go down the crevices now if you want it to look more have that that darker gray look or more of you know the black showing through you'd want to do it this way um, and of course you want to do it so that you don't have these streaks in here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to paint more of it. Um, I'm going to paint it a little bit more solid white so that when I go back with my sandpaper, it's going to, uh, just remove, um, spots in a few areas and there won't be nearly as much black, but it'll... It'll still look cool. So I'm just going around doing all the edges. And again, you don't need a ton of paint for this. It's just, you know, if you don't use a lot, it actually turns kind of a gray color rather than white. But it's better than the, the yellow that I had on there. That just wasn't, it just wasn't going to fit into my decor here. Or that white on here and I'm just using what they call these like chip brushes these are super cheap uh, bristle brushes this is a two incher okay pretty simple um, now we have to wait again for it to dry because uh, we can't try to sand it while it's wet or it just, it's just going to goop it all up and it, it won't work right. But I am going to take this opportunity to just kind of hit the edges a little bit more. And if you want it less rusticy like this, you can you can add more white in there. You can make it thicker. You can do whatever you want. I mean, it's it's your your project, whatever look you're going for. You can just add more paint. I I am. As this is drying a little bit, it's it's turning a little bit more gray. And so I'm just going to put a little bit more white on here just to brighten it up just a touch. The wonderful thing about projects like this is that you can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to follow, a, you know, I mean, it, it's always helpful to have some kind of a guidance to know kind of what to do, but you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. If you have a different look that you're going for, well, play around, experiment. That's the wonderful thing about art, and that should be done when you, when you do any kind of art project, is just have fun. Learn to play, you know, play in the paint, see... I wonder what happens if I use this, or and you could use a sponge brush, I guess, which you won't get the streakiness in it, but whatever you got. So I will come back when this is dry, and I will show you what to do next. All right. Okay, so I let this dry.
for uh, several hours while I was gone and um, ready to do the next step. So the next step is the basically the final step before reassembling, and it's just putting that full finish on there, taking away some of the white paint, and giving it more of a rustic look. Now, I've pulled together a couple different resources. Uh, you can use these Scotch-Brite pads, these green Scotch-Brite pads that might work. Um, if these are, these are not super aggressive, but if they're brand new, they're usually aggressive enough so that when you start to rub on here, you can take a little bit of the paint off. Um, I don't find that they're quite to my liking, but if you had some really thin, watery type paint and you just wanted a real fine amount taken off, this would probably be your best bet. Um, another thing that you can use, these are little fingernail files. They're, it's sandpaper, um, but they're very small. So it's a little coarser on this side than this side. This is a little finer. Uh, these will also work. Same thing. You just kind of rub it on there and it takes the paint off. Um, I prefer to use more of a sandpaper. This is actually a sanding disc, uh, but it's a little bit more aggressive and it's wider so I can cover a larger area at once. And I prefer to use sandpaper. Now you can use a sanding block, which is just a block that you wrap this around and you can use it that way. Um, I'm going to try it just without one. And if I find that I'm not getting the results that I want, then I will um, maybe grab a block of wood and finish it off that way. But just so you can see, the wood right here is um, it's fairly white. You can kind of see a little bit of the, the uh, black coming through a few of the spots. But most of those big holes are just, those are the spots where the, um, the hardware attaches. So what I'm going to do is just take and... And I start to, now, okay, all I did was just rub it a few times. And you can kind of see, hopefully you can see that right here, that black is starting to come through. Now, if I go too deep, it's going to go back down to that, the base coat before that, which was yellow. So I don't want to go more. Once I start seeing that black, I want to back off. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit all the edges. I want those edges to be more black blackened and if, again if you go too deep you're gonna you're gonna go past that black paint into the yellow so I'm just doing enough so I can start to see the black come through and one thing about when you're using um, this white paint the latex paint is a little bit more kind of rubbery um, and so you might find it's going to build up on your sandpaper a little bit. If it does that, you just switch to a cleaner spot and, and do more, okay? Now, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, if you take off too much, no big deal. You can always paint the whole thing black again and then white again and then start over if you wanted. Um, but just just don't rush the process and be too so aggressive that you take off more than you want so i just i'm just doing enough here until i start seeing that black coming through and even just with this little bit because i put such a thin layer of black on there some of the the portions had already gone to, down to raw wood and so if i hit that black and then i hit it again and it hits raw wood you know that's okay I, I can actually kind of like that so I don't know if you can see that kind of see some of the raw wood coming through there but you can see the black starting to peek through and that's what I want Now, I remember earlier when I said you don't have to do this really thick. The thicker you make the paint on the, the white paint, the more you're going to have to sand to get that off of there. And I can see it's kind of already beating up a little bit it's, because it's still soft. When, you're, when your paint cures up, it turns kind of, kind of plasticky until it's fully cured when it's like super dry after 
several weeks or a month, then it's easier to sand. But because we're doing it just hours later, it's still kind of, it's got kind of that softness to it. Look a little bit more rustic and now it's the right color it's white and black instead of pale yellow so then once you're done with that then you want to make sure you dust that off um, I like to use uh, a rag you can use a wet or dry rag but you just want to get that extra stuff off of there from the sanding Okay, so now that I've got all my, my pieces, I've got my board all done, now I'm just, it's just a matter of reassembling it. And since I've already got all the, the pilot holes are already in place, um, it, it's really easy. I don't have to, I've, I did all the layout a while ago, so I don't have to worry about that now. All right, and there we have it, finished product, white, a nice uh, white backer, rustic shelf. Going to hold my keys and my coat. I think I'm going to put this by the back door, because I've already got something by the front door. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to take you along on the journey, uh, just kind of showing you how I do a faux finish on, on you know, to make it look a little bit more rustic. And um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, thanks for watching. Have a, a wonderful evening. And um, hope you have fun trying out your project. God bless.
Hi, how you doing today? Um, yesterday I did a project showing how to um, full finish a, um, a piece of wood and uh, turned out pretty decent. I need to hang that up now. I'm in my um, back entryway. I'm just going to show you where I'm going to. I'm going to hang it on this wall right here. Um, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to hang something that is perhaps load bearing. Like you need, it's going to have significant weight or pressure put upon it, but it's going in a drywall. Ideally, you would find two studs in the wall and you'd screw directly into those. Uh, the, the project that I did with this, um, this uh, coat rack right here, I already had pre-drilled holes in there. Uh, let's see, where is it? There. Um, right here uh, for hangers. Uh, 16 inches on center because that's what typical stud placement is, 16 inches on center. Um, this particular wall does not have that and I'm going to go directly into the drywall. So I wanted to show you the best way to, uh, to hang something in drywall. A lot of times people use these little wall anchors for drywall. Um, these work great for very light, lighter weight things, uh, but they don't work great for something that's going to have a lot of force on it, especially if it's not going into a stud. So um, I've got these other wall anchors and these little pop anchors right here, what you do, uh, these can support up to 50 pounds. Sometimes they can go up to 80 pounds uh, per anchor. And although this is a little overkill for what I'm doing, it's still, it's, it's not a bad idea to, um, to give that, e that extra strength. So uh, what we do, uh, this requires a 5 16 inch, a, uh, 5 16 inch drill bit uh, in order to sink this in. So I've already got my, my spots marked um, I measured on the wall. Let's see, where is it? Here, there, and right there. So I've already got my spots marked. I just have to drill uh, a 5 sixteenths uh, inch hole in each one of these spots, and then I can plug these anchors in and then mount it to the um, mount the uh, rack to the wall. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to pause and then turn this around. 